Adia or desk is you not oye junior pastor at the mass of Ubi. To see a case, them is one junior pastor, maybe. Now, with Lysia, Paddy, we a ye to a bonteno. I know what day. A confirming some more who do a debia metana had to whom common. Paddy wins some more walker. Beso ye dinner would tea a brothel where Nigeria ni and Wobeka say. Udi tis a mobeka. I worked as a junior pastor under a certain prophet, O.C. Benjamin, of a church called Sofila's House Assembly. The church is in Ebony State, in Abakaliki. When I heard a bank of the door, immediately I opened the door, I saw several AK-47 guns pointed at my face. In that cell, a boy brought me a cold Sprite in nylon because bottles were not allowed in the cell. When he gave me the, the Sprite, I couldn't wait to drink it. I was very, very thirsty. But he said something. He said, guy, wait that thing well before you drink a more. So I was still thinking about what the guy said when someone in that cell snatched the Sprite from me and drank it. The guy died that day in that cell. I looked at this prophet and asked him what I did wrong. And he apologized and said to me that the well-being of his ministry is worth more than one life. And that if I want to be released, I must accept to work for him. If I disagree, he will not guarantee my safety. So this is a personal, um, a personal story, you know, it happened many years ago. I worked as a junior pastor under a certain prophet, O.C. Benjamin, of a church called Fofila's House Assembly. The church is in Ebony State, in Abakaliki, at a place called Odinukwe Street in Abakaliki. So at that time, I was very much younger and um, passionate about, you know, the things of God. All I wanted was to be called the man after God's heart, like David. I believed in prophets. I believed in prophecies. I believed in miracles. I believed in a lot of things that I would later found out to be lies and empty. This prophet, you know, could tell you everything about yourself. The balance in your bank account your date of birth, your mother's maiden name, how old your pregnancy is, the names of your family members, and so many other things. In fact, he raised the dead, healed the blind, caused the lame to walk, and so on, a lot of miracles. In fact, there was a woman who delivered a dead lamb in the glaring eyes of everyone in one of our crusades. This man was a major prophet. I heard he still is, you know, in Abakaliki. At that time, we used to move around in convoy of exotic cars, dressed in very expensive ways, and, you know, walk like the authorities to the throne of God. <laughs> and we had girls of all shapes and sizes throwing themselves at us. It was on a Tuesday that year, we had a crusade at Aban Road in Enugu, in a hotel called Royal Palace. So we lodged in that, you know, we lodged in that same hotel and we rented their home for the crusade. Before this day, I had informed my friends, Kane, Ita, and Zil, you know, of the crusade. They were students of UNN and they had, they had always wanted to come and witness the ministration of the friend, me, you know, who was now a pastor. That first night, while my friends were seated amidst the crowd that came for the, you know, miracle crusade, I led the opening prayers and uh, watered the ground for the coming of the prophetic commander, that is how we put it then. <laughs> After I ushered in the prophet, I left to my hotel room while in my room resting, I dozed off. So I was sleeping when I heard a bang on the door. And 
I jumped and I jumped up and quickly opened the door. I thought one of the senior pastors had, you know, come to scold me for relaxing in my hotel room while the crusade was going on downstairs. But I was wrong. Immediately I opened the door, I saw several EK-47 guns pointed at my feet by rough-looking, hefty men. You know, I nearly lost my breath. Without asking me anything, they, you know, descended on me with blues, boot kicks, slaps, you know. And my shirt was torn apart and used to tightly tie my hands to my back. Then they dragged me downstairs. We go downstairs and I saw, you know, an angry crowd everywhere. I saw, I saw my three friends mercilessly beaten and tied to a healer's van. You know, that was, that was when I realized that these men that tortured and dragged me downstairs were SAS officers. So they asked me if I knew who these my friends were and I said, and I stared at these guys that I've known for a very long time, confused, not knowing what was really happening or what they did or how I was connected to it. But of course, I, I couldn't deny my friends. I couldn't deny them. So what exactly happened? What happened was that while the prophet was ministering to the congregation as usual, he was um, healing the sick and they go to the town of a man who claimed he was born blind. The man was going to be the major miracle of the night. Unknown to the prophet, unknown to this blind man, rather my friend, my friends were living in the same neighborhood with him. So my friends knew that he was not blind and when they saw him faking blindness, they thought that the man was deceiving the prophet. So they stood up and, um, you know, went to let the prophet know that the man was not a blind man. Unknown to my friends, this man was hired by the prophet to fake blindness. So in the process of trying to blow the cover of this blind man, the congregation became confused and to douse the brewing confusion and you know rising suspicion the prophet raised false alarm and alleged that my friends were trying to you know blackmail and uh, kidnap him <laughs> so my friends were quickly caught by the congregation and you know of course we know this you know Puppet. Nobody even asked questions. So these my friends were caught beaten to pop before SARS arrived. When they were beat, being beaten, they kept on shouting that I was the one who invited them to the you know program, and that was how I was named the pastor who conspired with hoodlums to kidnap the prophet. <laughs> These kidnappers did not come with a car. Just pay attention, they did not come with a car. They did not come with a bicycle, no gun, no machet, no dagger, not even a razor blade. So were they going to kidnap and carry the prophet on their head? These were questions that nobody asked. So this incident confirmed my suspicions that you know suspicions I've had for a while I'd always known that there was a reason why some guys we, uh, you know who worked with us and are not even pastors were treated with you know more attention and paid better by the prophet whereas people like me who pray preach and do most of the other things to keep the congregation entertained before the arrival of the prophet in every program yet we are hardly appreciated we are even hardly in you know 
meetings, important meetings with the prophet. <laughs> so these guys were the ones who gather information to enable Papa to prophesy. And I also saddled with the responsibility of hiring miracle actors. That is why they were paid better and given preferential treatment. So to save himself, the prophet sacrificed me and my friends. Before the SARS people drove away with us, I had everyone who once revered, you know, revered me, calls me and call me all sorts of unpretable names, including my girlfriends, my girlfriend then, Neka. When we go to the police station, we were extremely tortured and subjected to all sorts of dehumanizing treatment by the officers who were going, who were doing the bidding of the prophet that gave them, you know, fat envelopes. We were locked up in different cells. As the leader of the kidnap gang, as I was, <laughs> I was being, you know, referred to, I was locked up in a cell, in cell one with other purportedly hardened criminals. The cell was very small and there was an open toilet at the center, you know, of, of the room. We were over 30 in that cell, somewhere with gun wounds and other bleeding injuries. So there was no space to sit down or squat. We were all standing awfully close to each other that our dirty bodies were gumming together. The heat was excruciating and the smell of the open latrine and wounds was suffocating. There was no space to breathe, no water to drink. No one who would have come to my rescue knew where I was. There was grave silence in the cell, except for, you know, the unintelligible talks from those who had lost their sanity due to frustration and suffocation. So each night, the SARS people come to that cell and pick one person, and we would never see that person again. I later, you know, learned from other inmates that the police people kill and sell body parts to doctors and hospitals. <laughs> it was such a terrible experience. So on the 15th, uh, you know, on the 15th day in that cell, a boy brought me a cold Sprite in nylon because bottles were not allowed in the cell. When he gave me the, the Sprite, I couldn't wait to drink it. I was very, very thirsty, but he said something. Immediately he handed it over to me. He said something. He said, Guy, weigh that thing well before you drink a more. That was what he said. So I was still thinking about what the guy said when someone in that cell snatched the sprite from me and drank it. The guy died that day in that cell. The next morning, my IPO came to our cell and shouted my name immediately I answered he said so you are still alive he didn't know when he said that after three weeks in that cell they took me to oc sas office that afternoon and i was shocked to see the prophet there he had brought bags of foreign rice bottles of expensive wines and loads of other goodies and on top of the money too of course so I was shocked when the SARS commander excused himself from, you know, from his office to give me and the prophet some privacy to talk. I looked at this prophet and asked him what I did wrong. And he apologized and said to me that the well-being of his ministry is worth more than one life. He told me that my friends had been released and that if I want to be released, I must accept to work for him as part of his eyes. That was how he put it. And accept that I must never tell anyone what happened. And that I must come to his church and apologize for what happened. If I disagree, 
I will remain in that cell and um, he will not guarantee my safety. And if I am released and I fail to play along, he will not also guarantee my safety too. So I mean I accepted, who wouldn't accept after three weeks of torture? I accepted. First, I wanted to know what being part of his eyes means and and I know that exchange of one fat envelope can cost me my life. So I was freed and I was shocked to see my mother and my aunt and um, some family friends at the gate of the police station. They told me that they've been there for six days and the police refused them access to me. This explained why no further attempts on my life was made. You know, people already knew where I was. It was the receptionist in the hotel where I was arrested that found my phone in my room and picked my mother's call and told her what had happened. So when I got back to Obakaliki, because it was a small town, almost everyone, you know, had heard that, had heard of, you know, the pastor that attempted to kidnap his papa. No one ever cared to ask my own part of the story, not even my girlfriend. After this incident, the secrets I was exposed to in the church and the church business is something unbelievable. I'm telling you this story not because I care what any, anyone believes about all these false prophets or, you know, that is none of my business. I've long stopped trying to open anyone's eyes. This video is simply to answer some of the questions most of my followers have been asking me. If you want to learn more about, you know, other mind-blowing secrets I've shared before, follow my page and watch some of the previous videos I've made. Ebushia for bit mabeka e kwana ba family no. That is a membership program a yeah ewe YouTube channel also. Na a registration ube register and so be a part of it. Match law how I be say I'll be register no. Na a din tina was all beka hubi. Ube a part of a kwana ba membership program no ewo a ye YouTube wa. Me wo videos a hood we buho a meye a post to a members nin kwani bin yashe. If you do time, be met many members, no, I a podcast, a e live videos, e with members, nengkwa, and e near one. And a number two, ya wo a e year in yanka, a e recent year kuna phobia, a year me a corner banner men call phobia, or mape kame hon, ye timi ko gana, e koyo mo adoye. It is all be a part of a e year a corner ba membership program, maybe e a hon, e a YouTube ha. Ube timi so a sponsor, and as I be can say, you may be hon, and to be can YouTube membership program, ya me can hon, se mi hon. Sika obe doneti ewo YouTube membership program no suwono. A YouTube for ebe te edye fi wu account mono. Se obi e timi fre o e kwana baso o kwa research mami ya. Se e sika ne ebi eni e timi edi ma nko fo o gane tri o moho ka because mi triya tax. E ma sa anko fo no e kwa kwa ye sa e jume di eno research no edi buwa nko fo a. Omo su e ye part of a kwana ba membership program yi hon. Intu be timi ebe ye part of a kwana ba membership program yi ewo YouTube ha. Ne hon akwa nchide ene ye. Ube timi ako eye video biya eye kwana ba ma postu oso. Nuwe miya join oso. U miya join eswa ebe bi another page bi e di amaw. E wana abe fili in u details. U ya na fi eno wa apply. Nwa beka e kwana ba membership program yi hon ewo YouTube ha. Me da se se wati ase. Bibi ni echele wosu na wanti ase ya. Ube timi le vu comment ewo mi video biya se. Me chile mousu e di achelo. Hello webu siyafo. So wo pesi fita asura chwa wo do fwo di e. And they're not for who could do with unique laser whitening. Unique laser whitening. I will toothpaste to strong one. What did you choose? Say, I'm not saying a year fitter. Now, a year fitter, no, 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 a year and cow bunny beer. I will no more beer. Any tea stain, coffee stain, smoking stain, see beer. Unique laser whitening product. A beginning in every swam or come on, come on, come on. The other one is a wood to so. Now, what did beer go? Or brush it or so. Now the chicho send this one yina kama uvia and who we num janwa we num sa into fre unique laser whitening and was zero seven nine 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 seven nine two three three zero unique laser whitening or say muni ses